Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren and today I'm going to kind of and today I'm going to hit two birds with one stone. So in the month of October I had a really really good reading month I guess in terms of the quality of books that I read and in terms of how much I enjoyed them. However in terms of quantity I didn't really read that many. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to wrap up my October October reads and I'm also going to haul all of the books that I bought in October. So the first book that I read in October was The Secret Barrister which is anonymous. Ignore the sticker, this is a borrowed copy from a friend. Um, and this is about the legal system in the UK, how the legal system works and what this barrister who has worked in the legal system would do to kind of change it. Sorry, it's making the balance really weird. Anyway, this book I thought was really, really insightful. I felt like I learned a load while I was reading this book. I didn't even know that some of these issues were prevalent in the legal system at all. So that was really interesting and I really enjoyed that. However, when I was physic, I started off physically reading the book and I found it like a really big slew and quite a slog to get through. So I listened to the audiobook and the audiobook was a lot better. However, this book is still full of complicated jargon. It's not the most accessible book to read. It's not easy reading, it's not light reading. However, it was very insightful and for that reason I rated it 3 out of 5 stars because I felt like the content was really good but it wasn't presented in the most accessible way. The next book I read this month was um, amazing. Like this is going to probably be on my top reads this year. I read this as part of The Bonathon which is a reread of Samantha Shannon's The Bone Season. And i would not read The Bone Season before. This book has been on my TBR since 2014. Yeah, yeah. And I finally, finally picked it up. And it is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. And this follows Paige, who is like a dreamwalker. And she can walk in dreamscapes. It's a really, really complicated plot, as everybody says who has read this book. This book, guys. Oh. It's a masterpiece. I loved the characters. I loved the plot. I thought the pacing was amazing. I thought that the way Samantha Shannon writes, this is my first Samantha Shannon book, was engaging. I would finish a chapter and I'd instantly want to read more. I couldn't put it down. The ending is a cliffhanger. And I rated this five out of five stars. It's one of the few five star books that I've had this year. I absolutely loved this. I'm going to carry on and read the Mime Order um, in November as part of the Bonathon. And I'm so, so glad I picked this up. Like, why did I take so long to pick it up? Oh my gosh. This is just amazing. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's amazing. I just love it. <laughs> I just want to know what happens. I can't wait to pick it up. Anyway amazing please read it it's not too late to join the bonathon there is a live show in november discussing this book and yeah i can't wait to read more of this series i know there's more to come i know i'm behind but yeah we're gonna get to it and the final book that i read this month i know this is pretty short is one of my most anticipated books of the year and that is wayward son by rainbow rowell and this is a sequel to Rainbow Rowell's Carry On book, which is based on the fan fiction that Kath, in her other novel, Fangirl, writes. It's very confusing. This you saw me haul, literally probably last month. And I loved Carry On. I really, really loved all the characters and it was so good to see these characters and to see them develop again. I just thoroughly enjoyed it. It was such a pleasure to read. This book was kind of based on a road trip that Simon, Baz and Penelope take and they also go to find Agatha because Agatha isn't a bit of a pickle. And this book was so delightful, like it was action packed, it was busy, there was some character development, there wasn't as many cute moments between Simon and Baz in it. There was a couple of moments that were like but there weren't as many. I also thought that the pacing in this was sometimes a little bit off, sometimes it was a bit slow and I also felt, oh, 
I also felt that the ending of this book was so, so rushed. I needed another 50 pages. I know that she is going to write another book with these characters pretty soon, but it was so rushed. Oh, the ending was just like the final battle was just so rushed. I felt like I blinked and it was over. So I rated this four out of five stars, partly because of the pacing issue. However, I was so happy to see these characters again. I do, I did enjoy the road trip setting. It's just that I'm a little bit more of a sucker for the school setting. And the first book was set in a school. But the road trip American adventure was really cool. And the development that Rainbow put into this kind of like the way spells work in america and the way the magic system works was so cool like i felt like i know more about the magical world in this book thanks to this more know more about this magical world thanks to this book it was a great addition i will definitely be reading on when she publishes more i love rainbow rail i'll probably read more of her books it was amazing yeah four out of five stars so the next portion of this haul is books that I have hauled this month. So books that I've bought. Um, this will probably be my last book haul in a long while. I am cutting down the amount of books that I'm buying and yeah, I know book hauls are a thing on booktube but I wanna reduce the amount of books that I buy and get through some of the books I already have on my shelves. Without further ado, I'm gonna show you the books though. The first book I picked up in Tesco's and it is, it's okay to feel blue and other lies. This is a series of essays about mental health in, oh, it matches my eye makeup, ooh, about mental health and it's got a variety of contributors. It's compiled by Scarlett Curtis, who compiled feminists should not wear, feminists should wear, girls should wear pink and other lies. I think that's what it's called. This is quite a big chunk. I am interested in mental health. I also saw that Hannah Witten and Adam Kay had kind of done some entries for this book and I'm really excited to read this. I do really love non-fiction but I seldom read it so I thought this was a great opportunity to read about mental health. I am always looking to expand kind of my knowledge on mental health, how things kind of work, knowing other people's perspectives so I'm very excited to pick that book on this is not with me it's downstairs because i started to read it it is ninth house by Lee Bardugo. everybody has been anticipating this book and i've just started to read it i'm about 50 pages in and i really like it not much more to really say about this this is Lee Bardugo's adult dark academia book um set at yale i know very little about it i've enjoyed Lee Bardugo in the past and this was so hyped that i couldn't not pick it up but i have already started reading it so you'll see it in a future wrap up the next two books kind of go together and this, the reason I picked these up is completely because of Ashley from A Frolic Through, Fic Through Fiction. She read these books over the summer and I think she reread them as well and I was really keen to pick them up. They sounded like a really cool concept, something really unique that I'd not read before. So it is City of Brass and Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakrabalti. And I know this is, I think it's Egyptian based. This is set in 18th century Cairo when Nari summons a Juno warrior. I know that this is based on Egyptian mythology. It's drawing on mythology that I've kind of not really touched on before. And I've heard that these are amazing. I've heard nothing but good things, which is why I want to read them. And I also know that the next one is coming out in 2020 so it's coming out next year so i really kind of want to get to these soon the first one is very thick and the covers are beautiful i mean look at the covers they are so beautiful this one is really thick however i'm super super excited to get to these <sighs> so another book that i picked up this month is another book that i've been anticipating for about two years this is harry potter and the Goblet of Fire Illustrated Edition by J.K. Rowling with illustrations by Adam Kay. This is what it says, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Illustrated. Yeah, it, I collect these. I have all of them so far. This was kind of like a treat to myself after a really rubbish week. And yeah, I have read Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, but you know, 
I wanna, I want this edition, this, I can't wait to see Harry Potter brought to life in a different way. I really, really love Jim Kay's illustrations, so what could go, possibly go wrong? So this is, that's kind of like a collector's item, I will read it, however it just goes on like my Harry Potter shelves because I kind of love Harry Potter a lot, so yeah, I'm super excited to have that as part of my collection and I've been anticipating it for two years and I can't wait to see the later books and see that darkness that's in the later books kind of transpired into illustrated format. The next set of books comes with a bit of a story. So I was lucky enough this month to meet Holly Bourne. She came to Birmingham Waterstones and she did a talk in collaboration with Women's Aid about her new book and violence against women. So I picked up, so first of all, we got given an amazing swag bag with loads of goodies in, which is super exciting. Um, so I picked up at the signing, we are all lemmings and snowflakes, so Holly could sign it. And she did, this is to Lauren and Holly. And yeah, I love a good YA contemporary. I really loved hearing Holly speak. I felt like she had such a great perspective on things and I really just enjoyed the night. It was amazing. This was a book that I already owned that I had signed by Holly. Soulmates. This is a proof that was in the, um, in the tote bag. Don't know what this is about. It comes out in 2020, June 2020. It was just a proof they put in there, so. Eh. Before the signing, I picked up Holly's new book, Places I Cried in Public, and this is about a girl who breaks up with a boyfriend that she kind of seems to be, sees to be abusive, and it's all about the places that she cried over him. And I can't wait to read this, especially hearing Holly talk about it in her in her signing. I love the cover of this. You can't really see it on camera but there's like deckled, no, embossed stuff on it. The covers, the edges are sprayed purple. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. And also, and also at the signing I picked up How Do You Like Me Now which is Holly's adult book. I don't know anything about this so I just wanted more books for Holly to sign. So that's my God's honest truth. I'll probably read it. I'm excited to read it, but I know nothing about it. So in the swag bag, I got my Waterstones receipt. I need to keep that and add the points on because I didn't use my points card. Important. So I picked, there was a poster that says places I cried in public and there. Am I normal yet? Some posters advertising other books that I don't know about. I'm not really in on why contemporary, it's not really like my thing, but they're cute, I might keep them. They've already got a bit like destroyed though, so it's a bit stressful. There is some a little thing of like chapters from different books, like a little taster booklet. I assume these are all from Osborne, who Holly is published with, so I'll give that a read, possibly. There might be a couple of gems in there that I want to read. There is an adorable bookmark. As you know, I collect bookmarks. I might do a bookmark collection video. Um, this is just a cardboard notebook that's got all of Holly's books on them. And, yeah. Solid. And finally, there are some little tiny chocolates with cute phrases on, which I thought was so adorable. And but not least, a packet of tissues. I thought it was a super sweet touch to the signing, especially because the signing wasn't that expensive to go to in the first place. I thought it was a super, super sweet touch and it really made the event 
quite sweet and intimate. I really enjoyed the evening. I thought it was really powerful. And I thought that Holly and the lady who interviewed her were really good. Holly was lovely to meet. Yeah, it was so great. So those are all the books that I read in October and those are all the books that I picked up in October. Let me know in the comments down below what you read in October. Did you pick up any books in October? Also let me know about your reading plans for November. I am hoping to do some non-fiction November stuff. I might do a video recommending non-fiction books things like that but let me know in the comments down below what your plans are for November, what did you do in October, how many books did you read, it wasn't a particularly good reading month for me but hey ho, who cares, reading is for fun, that's why we do it, who cares but yeah until next time I'll see you again soon, goodbye.